My dream is to have fame and money. Acting's the only thing I want to do. My dream is to work and be good at what I do. Stardom. I want people to notice me. Jerry, precious. Can I borrow your hairspray? Yes. Everyone dreams of films and Oscars. But to work, to be in work, that's the important thing. Are you a member? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's a 15 minute call. Okay, good luck. <laughs> The poor school's a drama school. We audition people who want to be professional actors, and over two years we do our best to train them and equip them for that life. We don't peddle fantasy here. People can have their own. Uh, we, 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 we deal in, in uh, the hard work of, of it and the fun, but it, but it is hard. And, and anyone who isn't serious about it soon finds out and, and, and they leave. I don't think I'll go into work this way. Oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, I don't think I'll go into work. Oh, what a beautiful day. I don't think I'll go into work. Oh, what a beautiful day. I don't think I'll go into work. Oh, what a beautiful day. Like lots of men in their mid to late 30s, I think I got to a point where I thought, yeah, this is all very nice, but this is watershed time. This is halfway through my career. Before I get to 65, shouldn't I make sure that I really am in the right thing? There was nothing else I should have tried. I'm a journalist with You Magazine, which is the supplement with the Mail on Sundays. I'm a commissioning editor, and I'm responsible for all the, the extra supplements that go in the magazine. I suppose we were told at school, and I suppose careers advisors would say, you can't be an actor, you better work in a bank, or you better be an engineer, or you better be a teacher. So you, I think you are quite heavily discouraged from pursuing something so dangerous and risky. And, um, and I suppose I, like a lot of other people, uh, went that traditional route of uh, school, further education, work, got married, bought a house. And it was only at this point I thought, hold on, Perhaps I should now listen to that nagging voice I'd always had about, you should have tried to be an actor. You always thought you might like to be an actor. And that's when I found out about this course. The advantage with this course that I heard of with the post school was the fact that it meant you could still work and study in the evenings and weekends. I went for the audition, got the place in the school and saw this rather scruffy place at the back of a bike shop in King's Cross. I never really imagined what a drama school would be or feel like, but I suppose I imagined there were big buildings and they had wonderful little theatres inside and fabulous facilities. None there, you know, a couple of rooms and a coffee machine. It was a very bizarre place to go. It's jingoism, isn't it? It's, oh, yes, it's sort of... yes, yeah. But it's, it's a lament for jingoism, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's that, that's the jingoism that's no longer here. Yes. You are not that sort of woman, Betty. I can't believe you are. I can't feel the same about you as I did. And Africa is to be communist, I suppose. I used to be proud to be British. There was a high ideal. Yeah, what sort of ideal, Pete? High! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us sacrificed something to go to drama school, and at times it was tough, studying four nights a week and weekends with work somehow slotted in. 
You had to really want to be an actor to keep going for two years. It's 1.30 in the morning, and here I am in my job as a cleaner for McDonald's. And I come here 11 o'clock at night, and clean through to 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, go home, go to bed about 10 o'clock, sit through to 5, up again, go to school at 6, and start all over again, basically. When we first started there, we were given a big lecture about not being late and the only plausible excuse for not attending is death, your own. Both my parents work in the clothing business. Uh, my mother's a machinist, my father's a shaper uh, for suits. So there was no theatrical background for me, apart from what I'd done in amateur. So uh, I had no idea what I was letting myself in for, really. There's no snobbery at all at the poor school. Not that I found. If anything, it, there's a kind of inverted snobbery. Um, Paul is very pro-working class. He believes that people from the working class have got as much right to a good training as anybody who was maybe born with the money to do it. And if you've maybe had to fight for the good things in life, you're going to fight to carry on with the training and make the most of it when you're finished. You're very supportive. Watch me! Watch me! Gasp as the seven-tongued monster rises up from the lake and demands a fresh virgin Watch me! Watch me! And he enters into your darkest pit! Watch me! Watch me! Enters into your darkest pit! What are we watching? Watch me! 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 Down, down, sing the song. Down, sing the song now. Amazing. Grace. <laughs> How sweet <laughs> the sound that saved our eyes. Take us in with your eyes. Like me. Does she look happy there? Very happy and committed. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was okay, blind. lovely. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs> It, that was when you were happiest, and that's when it didn't have that forced feeling about it. There was a tendency to repel with the, when we first saw you, and it, it softened and made you much more engaging. Two more, please. Anyone want to have some fun? Hey, good for it, good for it. All right, let's have just a little simple song first to relax. So a little simple song to relax. Oh, Mary, this London's a wonderful sight. The people they're working by day and by night. They don't grow potatoes, nor barley, nor wheat. But there's gangs of them digging for gold in the street. Enjoy it, it's lovely. At least when I asked them, that's what I was told. So I just took a hand in this digging for gold. But for all that I found there, I might as well be. Where the mountains of morn sweep down to the sea. My mum had always wanted to be a nurse, and she, I suppose, her love of, of that type of thing, I, I thought I'd have a go at it. All right, ready? Yes, there, okay. yes, yes. Nursing is very demanding because you have to, you give all the time. I feel all right, not, yes, not yes. too tired. No, no. The patient comes first, obviously, and that's how it should be. But um, the nurse really has to think about the patient and the running of the ward, and you never really consider a, uh, how you're feeling or how tired you are. No. You just keep going. Just once a day, is it? You have it done? Yeah. Uh, yes, except weekends, and I don't get it as a whole weekend unless no. it weeks through. No, it should be all right, and it's got a nice thick yes, bed on it. Yes, that's it, it then. Yeah. It's more comfortable to put it. Yes. Thank you very much. Then I went to the poor school at night, and acting, some people would think it was quite a, a selfish thing. You look into yourself and you explore how you feel about things, which is something I didn't do during the day, and it was such a change that sometimes I found in classes very hard to let go and very hard to push myself forward when somebody said, uh, who wants to do something next? Uh, my natural reaction was, oh, I'll let them go first and I'll go l last, which was very nursey, but you have to be a bit more pushy. I'm going back to the stage. I knew it. I'm stagnated. You see, I won't stagnate as long as there's breath left in my body. There was only one time when I seriously thought of leaving, and I did talk to Paul, and he strongly advised me not to. My mother was dying, and I knew she was going to die, and 
she wanted me to continue at college. I wanted to stay at college. It was just that I wanted to spend more time with her. And um, he said that if I gave up college at that time, I was going to lose my mother anyway, and I was going to lose the dream I had that I wanted to be an actress, and I would lose two things at the same time, which at the time was very hard. But um, I didn't leave. And I did spend time with my mother. I gave up work instead. And I spent a lot of time with her. And I was with her at the end, which is what I wanted. And I'm glad I stayed at college. Um, that's what she wanted me to do. If someone is doing a demanding job in the day where they have to make decisions, uh, uh, maybe uh, take care of other people, uh, then it is especially hard for them because that demanding job has to take second place to the demanding work they do here in the evening and at the weekend. I always remember it being November the 5th, bonfire night, a few weeks into the first term, when I found myself lying on a floor in this place, looking up at the ceiling, doing a movement lesson, when the movement teacher said, as it's bonfire night, you are all now to be part of a bonfire, get in a pile on top of each other, wriggle around like leaves and twigs and crackle. And I looked up the ceiling and I thought, this is it, I don't know what I'm doing here. I looked at the clock and thought, I'll do the next hour, and that's me finished. Because you go to the pub, you laugh about being a twig. You go home and you tell your mates you've been a twig or a leaf. By the time you've had a laugh and you go back the next day, you just go back for more. OK, I think that was a, a jolly good. It was a really good group run. It's, it's a shame we did it all together, so we didn't see everybody. Uh, to start with, why don't you tell me why you think you do this animal exercise? What's its relevance to an acting training? That's one very good point. Uh, animals have no inhibitions, and if an actor has no inhibitions, they can more easily be someone else. No inhibitions, right. What other thing about an animal that is relevant to acting and is about? Um, the observation. Observation is another good point. No inhibitions, observation. Instinctive behavior. Instinctive behavior. You can't be an animal, but you can, like a poet, capture that essence of the animal, like a poet does. He doesn't describe. So somebody asked me earlier on, why don't we look at mirrors? We're not trying to copy, to be a photographic image of an animal. We're trying to be it inside, using what we've got, and the only thing we've got physically is the spine. Does that make sense? My family is Irish working class. My uncles worked on the line at Fords in Dagnum. Where I come from, going to the theatre and that kind of stuff didn't cross our minds. So I didn't know I could be an actor till I was 19. Well, I knew long before that that I didn't want to have just a nine to five job.
My dad died when I was little and mum brought me and my brother up on a pretty rough council estate, the kind of place where kids get into trouble. Being in a band was a way out, not acting. But I admired actors more and when I had a go, I found I could do it. But there was no way I could afford to go to drama school full time. Financially, it wasn't feasible and I couldn't get a grant. So the course at the poor school was the only practical alternative for someone like me. I quite like living alone. If I live with someone, I get annoyed with them. Edward always... Just a sec, I don't hear annoyed. It's not clear, that, that, that's not clear speech. I quite like living alone. If I live with someone, I get annoyed with them. Edward always put on Capital Radio in the morning. Good, lovely. What do you think about Capital Radio? What do you want to think about <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play James Bond as opposed to Hamlet, because I'm not into the nobility of the profession. I'm not into acting to save my soul or anything along those lines. There's more money playing James Bond. That's the reality. That's the motivation. Right, good. That's the work, sir. I saw actors on television and thought, I can do that. I'm sure I could do it better than some of them. I've been a radiographer for about 10 years. Radiography is a good job, and if I didn't have this itch to be on the stage, I'd be quite happy here. But, uh, I think the acting's beginning to take over my life. I don't understand the drive he has to do the acting because I've got no interest in anything theatrical myself. So I can't see what it was that was so very important to him and I just have to accept that it's something he wanted to do and that he was going to do it, whatever I said. Because if I said to him, you can't go to drama school, you're not going to do it, he'd have resented me for it and life would have been a misery anyway. Whereas by letting him do it, I think I felt he'd get it out of his system. There were times when I found combining radiography, drama school and my marriage a great strain basically because they were incompatible. But I didn't want to give up acting. I was absolutely determined to last the two years at drama school. OK, I'm going around now. A couple of times it got very difficult, but the dream that I could be an actor kept me going. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. There was a time when I thought of divorcing David, because if I was going to be on my own, I might as well be totally free, because when you're married to someone, you've still got to consider them in anything that you do. I don't know whether Wendy will think it's worth it or not. I think it's a case of wait and see on that. I think probably, once again, in a similar situation to when I was at the poor school, if I'm out in the evenings, perhaps on tour or something, she is going to find it hard and probably then we'll think, no, it wasn't worth it. I think it takes a lot more courage for, for someone to generalise from the working class to say to themselves, I am going to see if I can be an actor. <laughs> In middle-class homes, it's often almost the thing to see if you can act. Uh, and so the percentage of auditionees from, loosely, the middle class, it must be 80% here. Yeah. And that's a shame, not because I don't want to see them, but because proportionately we ought to be seeing all those people who are thinking, might I do that? And saying, no, no, I can't, I can't do that. Why do you think you want to act? It's not I think, it's, you know, I've always wanted to. Uh, you know, from a long time back, since I could remember, all my friends, they're all doing what they want to do. So, you know, they, they said, this is what I've always wanted to do. I've known this, but they, they said it out loud, and I thought, why should I carry on wasting time? So your friends encouraged you, you mean? Yes, yeah, sort of. They didn't encourage me to do acting, they encouraged no. me to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. What about your family? Um, well, no, no encouragement. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false and treacherous, this day should Clarence be closely mewed up by a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer, shall be. Oh, sorry, I'm blanked. That's enough. I think that's fine. Yes. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm well done. Yes. The Shakespeare is quite strange because mm. he phrased it and made most of it admirable sense. Mm. Yeah. And there was wit in the eyes. Mm. I, I just. Not a lot. <laughs> Oh, a little. A little. Um, I mean, it wouldn't matter if we worked with him again at the end, just in case. Uh, maybe he was so terrified that. that yes. I mean, there's yes. just that suspicion. I, I really have. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown. It was not a crown, neither. It was one of these coronets. And as I told you, he put it by once. But for all that, to my thinking, he would fain have had it. Then he offered it again. Then he put it by again. Who told me? Uh, who told me in the field of Tewksbury? Who told? Who told me in the field of Tewksbury when Oxford had me down? He rescued me and said, "Dear brother, live and be a king." People don't see you. Men don't. Don't even admit your existence unless they're making love to you. And you gotta have your existence admitted by someone if you're going to have someone's protection. A moment later, I was wakened by Mary, your banging and your thumping. And I could smell your stinking bodies and your smelly feet all the way through the concrete walls. And I could hear you talking. Yeah. Okay. Are we all here? Yeah. 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 It's uh, been a, a fantastic audition by standards. Um, and thank you all very much. Uh, we'd like now the following people to stay. Uh, first of all, the recall, Sarah and Alex. Uh, and of the remainder, Patrick, Mark, Ben and Jeff. Uh, we'd like those people to stay. To the others, I'm sorry, we can't help you this time. Uh, and please don't take it too personally. It's only our opinion. Okay? We're probably wrong. At least that's certainly what you should think. Uh, be pissed off if you want to be, but don't let it be any more serious than that. Uh, thanks all very much. Yet again. Yes, <laughs> oh. I was very impressed by what you came back today with? Thank you. And we'd like Thank to you. offer you a place. Oh, brilliant. After all. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. That's great. Mm. Well, first of all, do you know, um, do you know for certain whether you want to uh, take it up or not? Definitely. You Absolutely. Do. No doubt. Lovely. Lovely. Right. I'll just go through a few uh, practical things. Okay. The fees are 620 a term. Yep. Providing you accept the place and send the deposit by a week today. I'll receive it. The deposit a week today. I wouldn't mind. Yes, is is, is that okay? Um, it should be. Yeah. All yeah. right. But definitely be within the next couple of weeks. But yeah, I'll try and get it for a week today. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll receive it straight away, and it won't okay. be long before uh, I'll be in touch about the start of term. That's great. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Here we were, nearly two years later. Thirteen of us left out of 24 who started. We survived rivalry, petty jealousy and exhaustion. Now we've got to get through our final year performance, ironically called Cloud Nine. Can you do that while I do my lips then? It's not going to put you off, is it? You've got to tell them well, nervousness was made even worse because somewhere in the audience there was an agent who'd come to watch the performance. But my loyal mum was there in the front row to egg me on. Right, it's, it's about three minutes to go, so... I love you. I love you too. You know what we did before? I wanted it again. I think about it all the time. Don't you want to anymore? Yes. Of course. 
There was a beer in there I didn't like. Did you see me trip over the bit at the start? No, I see, yeah, you, yeah, I see you couldn't get your belt out. You see? <laughs> was it supposed to be like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you were sort of, you know, got it caught like. Oh, you're brilliant. Really brilliant. No. <laughs> Most people would have at some stage dreamed of being a star of stage and screen. A few, with talent, get accepted at drama school and pursue it. What they, what they dream about is to get work because they like working, not being stars or uh, earning masses of money. They enjoy working. It's more enjoyable than most other things if you can do it well. Because most people's jobs are very boring and very dull and and it's much more interesting to be involved in the theatre if you're good enough to be in it. It was a sobering moment leaving the poor school for the last time, saying goodbye to people I'd become very close to. It was also crunch time, finding out if I'm good enough and determined enough to make my dream of being an actress real. Just move your elbow down a bit, just a bit, good, lovely. Okay, I'll just take one more of this. All right, hold it, hold it, nice, smile. Good. Hey. I'll come over here and we'll get to take a few close-ups. Uh -huh. Good. Okay, well, chin down a bit. Turn and look the other way. That's it, good, lovely. Okay, keep that, hold it. Give me a sort of, put your hands up here a bit. And give me a sort of eager beaver. My dream is, is to work, is just to be good at what I do, which is acting, and to get on and be paid at it and perhaps be recognised. You know, obviously everybody dreams of fame and fortune and Oscars, but to be recognised as a good actress. I'd like to do rep, obviously, because you get a bigger chance um, of the kind of parts. But if my job brought me to London, then that's where I'd go. If it took me to Dublin, that's where I'd go, or Edinburgh. I put my CV and the photos here. And then there's a letter just introducing myself and saying, can I audition for you? A bit about myself. Asking for an audition, telling them I think they're a wonderful theatre company. I really, really want to work for them. Have I got what it takes? I hope so. I hope that I'm going to, well, I'm going to find out. And I hope that I'm going to be proved right, that I have got it. I was a bit bowled over, really. A few days after leaving drama school, two agents wanted to see me about my future as an actor. One was at a plus joint in Mayfair, but it wasn't my scene. So I signed up with this agent in Soho. Hello? Hello, it's Paul McNeely. Plus, the disadvantage is going to the poor school, it's not one of the accredited drama schools, which means that they um, give release to the kids in the fact that when the kid gets his first job, it also gets its card. With you, we've got to start from nothing. We've got to get you the card. Now, 
that is a disadvantage. I mean, it could take two weeks to get your card. It could take two years for you to get your equity card. There's no guarantee on it at all. But that is the most important thing because without that card, you can't work as an actor. Um, so what we'll basically be doing is ringing up the reps, finding out if they do have any cards to give out and see if we can get you auditions for the reps. So therefore you've got to have your audition pieces ready. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've got to start looking. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I can give you a little bit of help, but not much. Yeah. But I have the trust in you to make sure that I'm going to earn some money out of you. It's been eight weeks since I left drama school and the reality is beginning to hit home. No acting job, no equity card, no agent. Out there, there are over 500 theatre companies. I've written to only 40. Sometimes it's impossible not to take rejection personally. Meanwhile, I continue to nurse, ride, and prepare for my first audition, whenever that will be. I've got a piece from Michael Bennett's chorus line that I'm working on at the moment. So anyway, I get off this Trailways bus with $187 in my pocket and seven years of tap and acrobatics behind me. I mean, I could do 180 degree splits and come up tapping the Morse code. Well, I figured with all that talent, the mayor's going to be waiting for me at the bus station, right? Wrong. I had to wait six months for an audition. Things happened to me much faster than I ever dreamed. There I was one morning, being chauffeur-driven to the scene of my first job. But to be quite honest, I felt completely overawed. All those people, all that money spent on one TV commercial for the Leeds Building Society. Mark, yeah? Michael, sorry. Michael, yeah. Just, uh, Paul, you take your positions there. All right, Paul, you get into position. Michael, you get in. Sorry, come in. Right, Michael's going to slam the old uh, concrete from here. Right, that's good. Yeah. Okay, turn over. Ready. And action. It was a bit of a laugh, really. I'd worked as a labourer to put myself through drama school, and what's my first acting job? Being a labourer. I still couldn't believe it. There I was at Pinewood Studios, acting alongside George Cole. Now, if I could ever play roles on TV or film, that would be brilliant. Looking for that important first job has become an endless ritual of finding out who's holding auditions and writing off. Meanwhile, I do have a good job to keep me going. You've got to put up with a lot when you start down on the bottom, obviously. Uh, it can be quite disheartening when you get pile on pile of rejections. I have had a few. It's been mainly, you know, we'll keep your CV and photo on file, which is better than just getting it straight back. At least next time you write to them, they'll at least have heard of you. Oh, hello. Could I speak to Mr. Williams, please? Oh, hello. My name's Mario Flarty. Hello. You've... That's all right. Um, you phoned earlier about an audition for tomorrow, yes? That's right. Right. Now, I wonder how you're fixed for 11.30. That'll be fine. Um, OK. The place is Gabriel's Hall. Yeah. Pimlico. Right. Bye-bye. Well, next one, love, is Peter Kirk. Right. He's from the poor school. Wrote into us. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he looks, uh, you know, he's a bit of... How tall is he? He's an older actor, which is good. Well, 38. Just getting an audition is a real hurdle. I don't know how many auditions I'll have to do before someone says, yes, Peter Kirk's the actor for us. Or how long I can shrug off rejection. I've been a senior journalist for 20 years and haven't tasted rejection for a long, long time. 
And some auditions can feel just like human cattle markets. Anyway, I'll give him a chat. Right. Peter? Well, Peter, let me tell you a bit about what we're um, up to here. You know we're doing Christmas carols. Right. Birmingham Raps, co-production with Vanessa Ford Productions in Birmingham Raps. That's right. one thing. But of course, apart from anything else, Vanessa has a number of productions all through th this year and of course all through next year. Right. Into productions, so she's looking at people in general anyway. Yeah. Uh, in your case, I mean, you know, it's very good to find the older actor, you know, who right. will be prepared, and this is the point I must make very careful, clearly to you, it's very episodic, so we've got to create a company that are prepared to do absolutely everything, you know, right. I mean, apart from the scenes, uh, you know, you've got to play horses and devils and God knows, phantoms and God yep. knows what, you know, yep. it's an on all night situation, there's no uh, doubt about that, you know, it's not, so. um, the singing is important, apart from the acting, so obviously, as you know, Peter, we're going to check the old singing out. And, you know, absolutely, yeah. I think it would be sad to get to the gold watch and the retirement gong and shake everyone's hand and say, thank you very much, I had a very nice time being a journalist, but I wish I'd try being an actor. I don't know long, long term. I don't know, obviously, what's going to happen to me in the next uh, 25, 30 years. I'll sort it out as I go along. But for the immediate future, I suppose I'm going to be, if I'm really lucky, I'll be a freelance actor and a freelance journalist. If I'm really, really lucky, I'll get the most wonderful acting work. It means I just have to do an occasional bit of journalism for her uh, to keep my hand in. Um, it, of course, if I'm really, really unlucky, I'll fall flat on my face and could, I don't know, fail in both areas, I suppose. That's the, that's the biggest risk, isn't it? On Christmas Day, I I would think about my dream for the future, what I'd like to be, what I'd like to have is that wonderful thing, fame. And a bit of money, of course, to go with it. He's not a Mr. Plug, really. Not really? No, no, no he, he might be for Noddy. Pooh, he could do Owl. Well, the point is, we'll keep the CV and we'll put it in that sort of form. I thought it was a very nice job. Yeah, also, they, if you see, they all are. It's just it's fabulous, mm. I mean, they... That I just have a belief that I will do it. I can't see myself doing anything else. I won't be happy doing anything else. So if I spend the rest of my life trying to achieve it, that's what I'm going to do. None of us got a part this time round, but we'll keep on trying. <laughs> <laughs>